Notion AI have just changed the game and I think I'm sold. I have had my doubts in the past about Notion AI and their $10 a month price tag, but two days ago I received an email from Notion which informed me about a new beta version feature that they've added to Notion AI. The name is very simple, it's Q&A. You ask a question specific to your Notion and Notion AI gives you an answer. Now this is all built on top of AI and as you go along creating new data in your projects, it learns how to index that information and answer questions about it. And the great thing is that you don't even have to be precise about your questions. Let's jump into Notion and see how it works. But before we do, a disclaimer, again, this is a beta version, so there might be errors and there might be issues, but let's not judge because it's still not an official version. However, I'm already impressed by what it can do. One important thing about Notion AI's Q&A feature is that it indexes things over a period of about half an hour to one hour. So if you drop new information into your board, don't expect Notion AI to give you answers about that information. You need to give it some time to teach the model. So last night I've created a little project about my new shoe company called Basis Shoes. I've created a bunch of different pages about topics within the company. And as you can see, I've got branding, human resources, a website, um, shoe designs, OKRs for our meetings about OKRs for the next quarter. And I have one folder where I've kept all the memos from each of the meetings that we've had in our imaginary little company. I've named them all by the date in which they were conducted. I mean, everything happened last night, but let's say that it's been going on for a while. So now I'll demonstrate how we can use the information that we've stored in our Notion more than half an hour ago and use the Q&A feature to find relevant information to our questions. First of all, how do you actually reach this Q&A feature that I've been talking about? Well, there are two options. One is in the bottom right corner of your screen, the little sparkles in a circle at the bottom. Once you click that, you'll see a little chat, kind of like you get on Facebook's website when you chat to somebody. And the other option that you have is to just click Command K, which opens up a huge window in the middle of your workspace where you can access your uh, different documents and areas but you can also ask AI for something. And that's what I'll do, just so it's a bit more prominent on the screen for you guys. So just for reference, one of the meetings I've set up as a discussion between three employees of my company, one of them being Amy. So let's find out what she said on the 22nd of November in that meeting. As you can see, Notion AI is going through all the documents that we have in our space until it finds the right one. And it gives a rundown of the information that Amy has mentioned in that meeting. And it also gives you a reference to the right documents that have that specific data in them. So we'll click into that one button at the bottom of the answer and that will take us straight into the document of the 22nd of November. And we can see a couple of messages between John, Amy and Jess and Notion AI has basically summarized what Amy has said and put it into our answer. Very cool. Next up, let's see if it can find a specific detail about one of our shoes that we've designed. So we'll ask it about the limitations of the flip-flop. And again, it's scrolling through all the documents in our workspace and it's found the right one. We actually do have a document named flip-flop because that's one of the designs of our shoes. And clicking on that, we'll jump right into that document. And as you can see, one of the paragraphs is exactly about the limitations of flip-flops. And since we're in the topic of design, let's see what shoes we've already designed for our company. So let's see if it will be any good at listing documents within a specific category. And it has, and it's also even given us a little detail on each of the different shoes. So we have the loafers, the oxfords, the flip-flops, and the sneakers. Of course, it's given us the links to all those pages so we can delve into those topics. But for now, we're gonna go back into our meetings topic and we're gonna try and narrow down when the marketing campaign has been discussed. Again, digging through the documents and it has found out that we've been talking about the marketing campaign on the 12th and the 17th of November. So just to confirm, let's click on each of those documents and see if we can find the actual references. And indeed, we have spoken about it on the 12th and we have spoken about it on the 17th. So that's all very good. Now, here's a document which I actually do use a lot. And this is my videos notion table where you can see what I'm working on, what I will be working on. And further out in those columns, you'll see all the different videos that I have already completed. And as you can see, I apply a different status to each of the videos completion level. So some of them are in to do, some of them are in title where I come up with the titles for my videos and then thumbnails and then recording, editing, etc. So as you can see, I have a lot of different videos in the not started section. I have two in the research section and two in the title section. And I want to ask Notion AI to tell me which of my videos are 
in the research status. And unfortunately, it seems like we found the first limitation of Notion AI. Again, this is beta, so no judgment, because I'm sure the great team at Notion is going to fix that relatively soon. But it did give us only ChatGPT vision, which is one of the two videos I'm working on, right? So let's try and ask it a couple of follow-up questions. Maybe it will figure it out. So I asked it, any other videos in the research status? Nope, just the one. Then I thought maybe it thinks about those items as pages, not videos. So I asked it if there are any pages that have the research status. Again, no success. And then I thought to myself that maybe Notion AI is built on top of a model which is not that great in maths, like the GPT-3, which they are using for their other features. And a good way to find out if it is actually a lower level of a model is to give it a mathematical equation and see if the answer is right. So we'll ask it for a relatively simple for a machine equation to solve, which is 111.222 times 333 times 444. And then I'll calculate the same thing in my calculator on my computer. And similar numbers, but not exactly right. So I'm guessing that it might be bad at maths, which means that it might be bad at counting and indexing tables and lists as it has done right now. Um, so instead of finding two, it found only one element. That's a far-fetched guess, but who knows, maybe I'm onto something. However, I do have high hopes that they do solve this because if they do, then finding information in Notion is going to be magical. I mean, imagine that you're working in a bigger company, not just myself, a bigger company where you have multiple employees and each one is working on a specific task, which is referenced in a board similar to this one. And you can check, for instance, how many pieces of work are in progress or what is Jimmy working on right now? And you'll get the answer straight away instead of digging through each of the boards, each of the documents, etc. And you know, with companies, as they scale up, the number of documents that they store is incrementally growing. So searching for information gets more and more difficult. Whereas with a tool like Notion AI, you can get to your information much faster. And furthermore, if you're new to the company, it makes it a whole lot more simple to find the relevant information instead of asking everyone around, which is not a bad thing, but I mean, can be daunting in your first days. And then one other thing I found as I was playing around with Notion AI's Q&A feature was that it only has information about what's happening inside your project. So when I asked it who the fourth president of the US was, it doesn't know that. So it's not connected to the overall knowledge base that uh, a model would have. It only learns based on the information that you have in your space, which is not really a limitation. It's kind of interesting to, to realize after having used ChatGPT for such a long amount of time, which obviously knows all those things. So there you go. That was Notion AI's new Q&A feature for you. And I guess I've covered everything I wanted to mention, except for perhaps the fact that um, Notion promises that they don't teach any public facing AI model based on your data. So your data is secure and it's only for your team to use. And in terms of security as well, when you work in a larger company, some documents will be made available to you, whereas others won't. And Notion AI knows about that fact and it will definitely limit the information that gets down to you. So if there's any document which is restricted from you, it will never reach you. As And as Notion AI says themselves, however nicely you ask for it, it won't give you that information which is exactly what you'd expect. And just to reiterate my first point is that you have to give it 30 minutes to one hour to index all that information before you can start using it. So if I create a new page right now about this video and I start asking questions to Notion AI, it won't find it. I'll have to wait 30 minutes, which is a perfect amount of time for a quick lunch break. And then once I get back to it, I can gather all that information and happy days. And as always, thank you so much for sticking around and I'll see you in the next video.